All right, all right, all right. We got 11.6. Areas of circles, segments, and sectors. Ah, I love this, okay? So we're going to be doing all sorts of things with wonderful circles. Now, segments might sound like a segment, but it's actually a portion of a circle. You just wait and see, all right? It's going to be uh, quite exciting. All righty, a sector of a circle is just a, uh, a region of the circle that's been shaded, right? So just a portion of that circle. Think of it as the a slice of pizza out of the pizza pie uh, that you've got there. It's kind of, we've, we've probably even talked a little bit about this when we did uh, arc length and arc measure, uh, but basically this is a portion of the area, whereas arc length of the port was a portion of the circumference. All right. A segment is just a portion of the circle that's bounded by a chord. Really, the way I look at it is like if I were to make this – this whole thing would be a sector right here. This would all be a sector. Um, so it's really like the uh, the crust of the pizza slice, if you will, in a way. right? If I had maybe a little more pizza slice size, boom, that part right up here, that is the segment, whereas the whole thing is the sector. Hmm, I wonder how we'll figure out these areas. All right, sector area. It's going to look very similar to when we did our... Uh, arc length. So let's see here. A sector area. Well, if you have, let's see here, there's 360 degrees in a circle, right? Okay. And the area of the whole circle would be pi r squared, right? So that's like the whole thing in our denominators. Now, if I'm looking at finding the area of, say, this sector right here, if I knew the central angle, then I'd be able to find my sector area, right? Because what I'm dealing with is the portion over the entire thing equals the portion of it over the entire thing. Boom, there's my proportion formula. So I can actually figure out anything from this. I could say if this is the sector and I also, you know, the area of the circle, find the central angle, you could do that. I could have you solve for any one of these three things here uh, in this particular proportion. Okay? Cool. So let's jot that down. All right, real life application here, kids. Tom has ordered a 20 inch pizza. If he ate 40 degrees of the whole pizza, how much in square inches of the pizza did he eat? Well, you know, I mean, if you've never done this before in your entire life, said, oh, I've eaten 40 degrees of that pizza. You know, you're just really not living, right? Um, totally. Everybody measures their pizza slices in degrees and stuff like that. Totally, totally the case. All right. So there's my circle. If I'm talking about, boom, 40 degrees, we'll say is about that. Um, here's a 20-inch pizza. Well, 20-inch pizza, that's my diameter, right? So my radius would be... 10. Cool. And I want to figure out the area right here of this whole thing. So let's figure that out. I would have my central angle over 360 is equal to my area of the sector. Um, we'll just call it x over uh, my total area, pi times my radius of 10 squared. All right. Now, we are going to keep this in terms of pi, so let's multiply the 100 times the 40, right? 10 squared is 100, and I'm going to divide that by 360, and I get 11.1 repeating, so I'm going to hit math fraction, and I'm going to turn it into a fraction, which is 100 over 9 pi inches squared. We'll leave pi in there because it's a pizza pi. Um, anyways, if I actually were to multiply it by pi, and get uh, a decimal answer, it'd be about 34.9 inches squared. Um, so that, I feel like, is a more useful number. But we generally keep everything in terms of pi, exact answers. Uh, it can be a little bit easier to see where you may have gone wrong in a problem and give you partial credit on a quiz or a test. So um, that's a helpful thing. And also a lot of standardized tests uh, keep things in terms of pi, reduced radicals, so we practice that. Okay, there's our first wonderful example. All right, let's uh, find the area of the shaded region. That's a segment, right? We have to put our thinking caps on. That's why this uh, girl here has her thinking cap on. All right, let's do it. 
I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to work, so I'm going to pop this over here. Um, well, hmm, I just want that portion. Well, if I were to find, say, the entire sector, I could then, how about subtract out this triangle, thus leaving me with just that segment. And that is the way to go about it. All right, so I've got 120 for my central angle over 360, so a third of the circle we're dealing with, equals my um, segment over pi times 6 squared. Well, um, if I were to multiply all this together, I end up with, I believe, 12 pi is equal to x. So where do we go from here? Well, that's the area of my sector. I need the segment. So let's now find the area of the triangle. Well, if I'm dealing with this triangle here that is 120 degrees, and I were to drop an altitude, that would cut that into 60 and 60, and this guy right here would be 30, because this is a right angle when I drop the altitude. Where was that 6 located? That was the side length right here. So if that's 6, then my height is 3, and my uh, base of that triangle would be 3 root 3, so the whole thing is 6 root 3. Okay. Area equals 1 half times my base is 6 root 3 times my height of 3. And I end up with, well, 6 times a half is 3, times 3 is 9 root 3. So our, that is the area of the triangle. So we got to do a little subtraction, I'm thinking, right? So I'd have 12 pi minus 9 root 3. That would be no units, units squared. And we will leave it like this as our final answer. You could um, plug that in your calculator. Let's see what we get as a decimal just for fun. Um, our decimal will be about 22.1 units squared. So that's our rounded version of that. Um, the reason, again, why we have you keep it exact is it's very easy to tell where you may have gone wrong if you made a mistake here, right? I could say, oh, if you had this correct here and you just, maybe you forgot to divide this by 2 and you had minus 18 root 3. I would check and do the decimal, make sure it does make sense, but your final answers will be left like this. Very easy to check for partial credit with that and uh, standardized test score or standardized tests often have you leave it in reduced radicals, Okay. All right, this one will be no problemo. Find the area of the shaded region. Again, there are a couple ways of going about this particular one, but let's practice with what we've just learned. All right, I'm going to draw in, boom, another radius here of that circle, of that square, as it's referred to, um, and that makes this guy 4, right? I'm going to find my area of the sector first. So I've got, well... This is going to be 90, right, because it's a central angle with four sides. Therefore, 360 divided by 4 is 90. Um, so the area of my sector would be, uh, let's see, 90 over 360 is equal to x over, and then it would be pi times my radius of 4 squared. Okay? So that ends up being uh, oops, x equals 4 pi. Cool. Now, I need to subtract out the triangle. So i got to find out this triangle and subtract it. So let's do that. Well, if you're noticing, hey, you know what? That 4 and 4, those guys are perpendicular. I could do 1 half 4 times 4 as my base and my height because they are perpendicular. That's 16 over 2, which equals 8. Boom, there's my triangle. So what I have is 4 pi minus 8 units squared. Cool. I like it. Another way I've seen people do this is they find the area of the entire circle, um, then subtract out the square, and then divide that by 4 because you're only finding one of those 4. All right, so again, there are a few ways of doing this. Uh, but it is uh, up to you to make that decision as to what you think might be easiest for you. Cool. All right, I got some H-dubs coming at you. Have fun. It'll be very, very 
exciting. It looks like that dog ate the refrigerator magnets. I hope he doesn't get sick.